Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 15 in the how to program in C Sharp course. In today's video we're going to take a look at generics. First off we'll talk about gen what uh, generics are, uh, creating generic classes and methods and using some of the stuff inside the system.collections.generic namespace. So generics might sound really frightening but they're extremely useful for a bunch of things when programming so I'm kind of excited to show you this. And uh, also I want to mention that the reason why it's been so long since the last video is because I've started a new series that I'm really enjoying and it's called uh, Making a Multiplayer FPS in Unity. So if you've ever used Unity or been wanting to make a multiplayer game or an FPS of course, uh, well then I definitely suggest you check that out by clicking the screen now. And if, I, if not, uh, well then enjoy today's video. So the very concept of generic classes and methods is actually fairly simple but it can sound complex at times. So the idea is that when we don't know the type of our object, we use generics. So it allows us to handle objects of an unknown data type. So if we start here by an ex uh, making an example out of a generic class. So let's start by making a class, giving it a name and I'm going to call this a key value pair. And uh, the reason why is in programming, it's often useful to group together two pieces of data. I mean, uh, this can be used for a, n a number of uh, different things. For example, if we wanted to uh, create this idea of a library, that it's associated a name of a book with a certain book. Well, then we would create a key value pair where the key was the name of the book and the value was the actual book. We could also have this uh, idea of a price list, for example, where we had the name of the product associated with the price of the product. So we can do many things and store them in these uh, duples. So now that we uh, know what a key value pair is, let's try using generics to model this out in code. So normally when making a class we would go in here and we would open and close some curly brackets. And that's also what we want to do. But right after the name we want to add on a bit of code. And uh, we start by open and closing some of these uh, less than and greater than signs. And in here we want to give, it, uh, give the computer uh, a uh, name for the types uh, that we are going to be using in the class. So uh, we often start by calling these t. Sometimes you will see in programming that um, it's only called t, uh, but I like to kind of infer some kind of usage. So we'll call this one the t key and this one the t value. So these are now the types. So whatever we pass in, let's say that we wanted to have the, uh, the uh, name of the product and the price, well then we would pass in the a string here and t key would now be a string and t value would be an integer because we or a float value if you wanted to have decimal places in your price. So these are now types not values. Then what we can do in here is we can basically treat these as any other data type. So we can make a, a public t key and we can call this key and this is now just a variable of type t key meaning whatever we passed in and the value uh, we are going to uh, assign it in a second and then we'll have a t value which we are going to call value. So I know this maybe uh, feels a bit abstract uh, but just how useful it is uh, you're going to uh, realize in a moment. So um, now we can uh, go ahead and create a constructor for this key value pair class. And we do this uh, as we would with any other class. So we make a public, whoops, key value pair. And uh, let's give it some arguments. So we can uh, maybe get a t key and we'll call this key and a t value and uh, we'll call this underscore value. And uh, then we will simply assign key or a t key to key and set value equal to underscore value. There we go. So this looks like any other class except the types that we are using are the, uh, are the general or generic types up here. Okay. 
So now that we have this idea of a key value pair and this is able to store data already, we need to kind of visualize this uh, in some way. So let's create a method that will print out the data in uh, this class. So let's simply make a print method. Uh, and in order to do this, we just make a public void and we'll call this print. And it is simply going to say uh, console.writeLine and uh, then it will do key, uh, not underscore key, but key dot to string. And we can maybe just say that this is the key plus and copy that down here. And this is now the value. And this is the value dot to string. So this will print out the key and the value. All right, so uh, now that we've modeled out this class, let's try using it. So uh, we could go ahead and create a new key value pair. And for this, we of course just uh, give it uh, the type and then the name. And I want to call this meaning. And I want to set it, oh yeah, of course, this is a generic. So we have to put in on the data types that we want to be using. And uh, here I first want to give it a string and then an integer. So this is uh, kind of the uh, syntax for doing that. We are saying that t key should be the string type and t value should be the integer type. Then we name the variable as with any other and we'll name this meaning. And we'll set it e equal to a new key value pair. And again, we have to pass in string and integer, nothing's changed. And uh, then we want to pass in the key and the value into the constructor here. So the key is going to be life and the value is going to be 42. So now that we close, uh, when we've closed that off, uh, we should be able to run the program, but of course we want to print this out. So let's do meaning.print. And uh, now when we run this, hit play, you can see it prints out that the key was life and the value was 42. And this is all stored in one, var one variable called meaning. So now we've created a data type that's much more complex than a, sim uh, than a single standard data type like string or int. We've actually paired these two together and created a way for us to print them out. So that's a, a um, fairly uh, simple uh, use of a generic type, but something that is used all the time. I mean, um, if we go up here and say using system.collections.generic, well then uh, include, included in the uh, C sharp language is this collections just dot generic namespace. And this hosts a bunch of uh, kind of um, utility classes and methods uh, for handling um, generic things. And one of these is the um, list. That's basically a resizable array as we've seen. But it also has another class uh, called the um, dictionary. And the dictionary is basically a list of key value pairs. I mean, if we have this idea of a dictionary where we have a whole book where we associate a word with the description of the word, well, then you can see that we have an, uh, a list of a bunch of key value pairs. So that's basically what a dictionary is. And if we wanted to go ahead and, and use this, you can see just how similar it, it is to what we just created. I mean, we can go ahead and create a new dictionary here and we can say that we want this to be a uh, string and uh, integer again. And uh, we can call this um, prices, set it equal to a new dictionary. And we'd, we would again give it a string and an integer. And uh, in here we would uh, give it the capacity, how many elements are in, uh, can be in the dictionary. So uh, we would maybe set this equal to five. And uh, then we can simply go ahead and say prices dot add, and we could add a, a key value pair. So we give it the key here, and that could maybe be a watermelon. Pretty sure that's in one word, right? And then uh, the value uh, could maybe be five. We could also add a 
car and this is pretty much any car apparently and uh, the value for uh, this is going to be a uh, hundred thousand and uh, we could of course just go on here we could uh, remove elements and all that and we can print them out so you can see that this has exactly um, the same uh, principle applied here so now we can go ahead and maybe print out prices and then we'll uh, take the first element here uh, so I think we are able to just say console dot write line and then input prices at zero index fairly sure so nope we have to maybe do dot two string still doesn't work so I'll just check for the way to do this Okay, so I was being stupid there. It's apparently too late for me to do a video. Uh, so the whole idea with the dictionary is, of course, you don't put in uh, the uh, index of the value, but instead uh, we give it the uh, key. So we would put in watermelon here and we should get the value uh, five. So that's kind of the whole point. So if we remove that and go like that, we should be able to get the value five there. And you can see that we indeed uh, we indeed did and we could put in the value car and we get the value 100,000 there um, so you can see just how useful that actually is good so let's now remove this system.collections.generic uh, namespace and uh, let's take a look at the generic method so if we wanted to go ahead and create a generic method inside a non-generic class, uh, we could make a non-generic class here called maybe uh, utility. And this is something I do for a lot of the uh, applications that I write, is I create some kind of uh, utility class that hosts a bunch of generic methods for doing things that I often do. Um, especially because sometimes I like to uh, model out uh, the uh, way of handling handling this data myself instead of using the uh, collections just dot generic namespace um, because that can sometimes act funny and it's better if you know exactly what it's doing. So inside of this uh, utility class, let's create a um, method called compare values. And that will basically check if two values of unknown types are equal. So um, let's create a public void and uh, the method here, or a bool of course, public static bool, let's make that static, and uh, we'll call this compare values and uh, the first type is just going to be type 1 and the second one we're going to call t2, just like that and we're going to take use these two types as arguments. So in here we're going to have an argument of type t1 and we're going to call this value1 and an argument of t type 2 or t2 and we're going to call this value2. So now we can pass in two values with different or the same data types and uh, then we can compare them. So we can simply return and then we can check, so we can say value1.equals value2. And we don't need to cast these objects in any way. We don't need to generalize them into an object uh, or anything like that. We simply say that we can, this could be an integer, a string, it could be a custom class, it could be anything, and it will check its value up against this one. So, and it will be stored in uh, these two variables. So it will simply uh, then take the value 1, use the equals method to see if it's equal to value 2. If it is, it will return true. If not, it will return false. So let's try that. So console.writeLine and uh, inside of this we'll simply call utility.compareValue uh, or maybe compare values. There we go. And uh, you would think that you needed to go ahead and put in string and int here or whatever. Uh, but actually you can exclude this and it will infer uh, the types upon the usage. Uh, so we could actually just go ahead and write uh, 10 and 3 here and uh, it will work. You can see that it gives us no errors and uh, when we play here it says false. If I change this to 10 
it is going to say true. And you can see I can put in uh, the uh, a Boolean value there and it's of course gonna say false. Uh, I could also put in a string here and it's still gonna say false, but it doesn't give me an error. Uh, if I then put in another string here that is different, it's still gonna say uh, false until it is exactly the same. So we have hello and hello here, and now it says true. And we could of course expand upon this, create another method that will compare types. So we could make a public static bool here that instead of comparing the values, simply check if the two uh, values we put in are of the same uh, data type. So we have the T1 and T2 here. And uh, it's gonna take, uh, let's now call these type one and uh, type two. And it's going to return. And uh, now we can simply take the type of type one. Could uh, go ahead and do it like that. Or we could simply use the T1 and uh, T2 so we, don't actually need to do uh, any uh, values in here if we don't want to, we can simply use those. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and say um, type of type one, just to make this very explicit, uh, dot equals, and then type of type two. So it will simply take the type of type one, which is of course T1, and see if it is the same as uh, uh, T2. So I think that should do it. Nope. Uh, already defined some memory called compare values. Okay, that's because we need to rename this to compare types. And uh, let's see if we are error free. We are not. Uh, the type name could not be found. Are you missing a, uh, oh, of course we need to put in uh, T1 there and T2 there, I think. What is going on? Uh, T1, T2, like this. Okay, so this is the way. Uh, and then we do console.writeLine utility uh, dot compare types. Yeah, there we go. And uh, then we simply uh, check if, uh, let's say, uh, hello is the same as 10. So that's a string and an integer. And uh, now when we hit play here, uh, it's expecting a parentheses, of course. And it has it now. You can see it, of course, says false. But if I go in and write hello here, it's going to say true. And the cool thing is that if I now change the value here, it's still going to say true, because it's no longer comparing the value, it's simply comparing the type. So uh, that is kind of uh, a way to think about uh, generics and uh, some pretty useful use cases, um, both for the generic class and the generic method. And if you want to not um, maybe not jump right into modeling your own classes and methods using generics, you should definitely get familiar with a lot of the uh, stuff inside of the uh, system.collections.generic namespace. I mean, there are a bunch of useful things in there. Uh, I mean, if we just uh, take a look at it here, uh, we can simply do uh, generic Oop. collections. Uh, so we have the dictionary, we have the list, we have the, um, maybe I should just do this so you can see that it's actually there. So we have the list, we also have the uh, stack and uh, a bunch of others. <laughs> so definitely play around with that, look them up, try and use this, them in your program and uh, maybe even try adding your own. So. Uh, that was kind of it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.